The Economist magazine arguably makes the best visuals on the internet, so I've searched through their huge database of charts to try to recreate three of their most popular ones in Excel. And even though they look simple, they're actually quite difficult to make, so let's get into it. Starting with the first chart, here's the data that we'll need for it, and you can download the Excel file below the video. So here's the chart that we want to replicate down below. And to get started, we're simply going to select this whole data. So control shift down, control shift right there. And from here, once we have it selected, we're gonna head over to insert. And then we're gonna go down to these columns and just select the 2D clustered stack bar chart here. So that's the one that we'll go for. Let's put it over here to the side. And really, we don't need the title for now. We don't need the legend down below either. So let's delete that. And now you can see that the order here seems to be off where we're going in reverse order. So we're just gonna select it, go to right click, format axis, and then down over here, you're gonna find categories and we wanna select in reverse order. So now that's looking more like it. Let me resize this a bit. Now I'm just gonna go over to the side where it says format chart area and let's remove the fill. So we'll go to no fill and no border either. We can also get rid of these grid lines by selecting them and hitting on delete. As for the axis here, we're not gonna need that either, so we'll delete it. Same thing goes with this other one. All right, so now we have this part looking exactly the same. We just wanna change the highlight colors. So this one, instead of blue, the fill color here is going to be a red. So I'm just gonna go for this red over here. And same thing with this orange that we're gonna change to something like a light blue. Let's say we go for this one here. Awesome. Now we need to work on the data labels. And so for this first one, let's go ahead and select the red bars, right click and go to add data labels. Once we have those, we wanna click on them again, right click and then go to format data labels because we don't just want the number, we also want the series name. So we'll select on series name there and you can see that's looking more like it. We want it left aligned. So we're gonna go over to inside base. Nice. Now let's head over to home here and let's change the size to one lower. And we're also gonna change the font color to a white. And I'm also going to left align the text here. Now to resize them, we can select one and just stretch it out like so. And you can see how the second one is called online stores. So we actually need to change the name there. For that, we simply can select inside of it and just change it to online stores like so. And let me fast forward how I do the rest. Awesome, so that's one side done and the other side is pretty much the same thing. So we'll add the data labels. Great, before we move on to the titles here, let's make this a touch thicker. So these bars, we would like them to be thicker we can just select them and go to right click, format data series. So that's what I have over here. And we wanna decrease that gap width. So that's the gap between the bars. So maybe we put something like 100 there. And so you can see that's looking slightly thicker. Now let's work on all of the titles. So for this, you can see that we have the names of the companies right above the bars. We can do that with something like inserting a text box. So let's head over to insert under shapes. We'll select the first one, which is a text box. Let's put it about right over here. So this one's going to be alphabet, Google. And let's select this with control A and make it smaller. Let's also bolden it and just drag it down a bit. Before we do the other ones, you'll notice that this one has a border and a fill. So let's get rid of that with no fill and no line as well. Now to duplicate these, we can simply select one and then just go to Control Alt and just drag it down. You can see we have the second one there. Same thing with the other ones. Let me fast forward how I do these. Great, so we now have the four companies. Now for the subheader right above it, we can also select that same format and Control Alt and drag it up this time. Let's make the font size here a bit bigger, maybe something like a size nine. And let me rewrite this and drag it down a bit. Awesome. Now we can work on the very top part, which is this other title in red. We can also select this text box and control alt and drag it up. And let me fast forward how I rename this. 
let's change the font color to a red. So we'll select this red over here. And let's also make this bigger, something like a size 10. Finally, you can see that there's this line and this shape over here, which is kind of trademark at The Economist. And to do that, we're first gonna go to Insert. Under Shapes here, let's go ahead and select a rectangle. And we're simply gonna add that kind of like so. Let's see. And then we'll change the, the shape fill to the red. And we're not gonna add an outline. So we'll go for no outline there. And let's put it down over here. And then we wanna do the line. So we're just gonna go over to insert again. And this time we're gonna insert a line. Now to keep it straight, just hit the shift key. That's gonna allow you to keep the whole line straight there. And let me drag this down over here. Now for the outline, we want it to be in the same red color and we don't want it to be as thick. So we can go to that drop down again under the weight. Let's change that to around three fourths. Now you can see what that looks like. Awesome, that's the first chart done. And just to explain a bit what's going on and how The Economist thinks about data visualization, you can see here that the title doesn't actually explain the chart. Instead, it's just something catchy while the subtitle is what actually describes what's going on. Also, you might notice they always keep the visual very minimal. Here, they don't have any grid lines or they don't have any axis either as it's not necessary. And finally, they always have that recognizable shape and line on the top left to make sure everyone knows it's The Economist. Moving on to the second visual, and these are going to get progressively harder. So over here, you can see that we have a table with the rank the city and the average pollution. Here's the visual that we wanna to try to replicate. So this is actually going to be a table of sorts. Now for it, we can first just go ahead and select the whole area down here. So control shift down, control shift right. And you'll notice that it has this highlight color in blue and light blue there. So we can just go over to the fill color and just select a light blue that looks alike. Maybe we'll go for this one right over here just gonna click on that. You'll also notice that they do have some uh, grid lines in white between them separating each of these. So for that, we can go over to the borders and all the way to the bottom, you'll see that it says the line color. So that's what we want. We want it in white and we can go ahead and just do the first one kind of like that. As you can see, it's not quite thick enough. So we're just gonna go back in there under the borders and under line style, let's go ahead and make this thicker with this one down over here. I'm just gonna draw that out as well. Now we can just hit on escape there. So we have that first one and for all the other ones, we can just go one by one. So I'm just gonna select this area and just click on that. The shortcut for these is just Alt H B. And then for the bottom border, it's gonna be O there. Another way that we could go about it is just by, by selecting this format painter and just dragging this all the way down up to layer. And now you can see they all have that border. Awesome. You might have noticed that they do have the ranks boldened. So we can just select that column I there and hit control B. Next up, some of these don't actually have the highlight color in blue in the back, like Pakistan over here or China. So we can just select those with shift right arrow then just go to Alt H H. So that's going to be the border color over here and just go with N for no fill. Let me do the other ones as well. So Alt H H N and this last one, number 10, Alt H H N. Awesome. One thing we're missing here is that average pollution. As you can see, it goes from very high in red all the way to low in dark blue. So we can first select all of these numbers with control shift down arrow. And then we're gonna use conditional formatting and we'll create a rule from high to low with a color scale. So we'll go to conditional formatting, color scales, and let's go to more rules as we wanna create a custom one. So what rule do we want? Well, we want the lowest value to be in a blue color. So we'll go for lowest there and the color, let's say we go for a light blue, like this one over here. And for the highest value, we want it to be in bright red. So we'll go for this standard color and we'll hit on OK. Now you can see that's looking even better. To split this into two columns, it's very simple. 
we would just select the relevant area. So this one right here, hit, hit on control X to cut it. And we'll just paste it up over here with control V. We can resize this area. And then over here, we're gonna add the same titles. So control C and control V to paste them over here. Let me double click there to make this bigger. Awesome. Now for the titles, let me just fast forward that as we've already seen how to do it. Awesome, that's a visual. And as you can see that conditional formatting really helps with understanding how the visual works. And you can see that we also have areas highlighted in white, just to emphasize that they're outside of India. And if you wanna learn even more Excel visuals, check out our Excel for business and finance course using the link in the description below. We won't just cover Excel visuals, we'll also go through formatting best practices and shortcuts, building awesome dashboards, cleaning up raw data sets, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and more. All right, back to the video. Finally, we have the hardest visual that we'll cover today. And here's the data set that we'll be using. And here's the visual down below. As you can see, it's somewhat of a combo chart with some scatters as well. That's how we'll try to go about it. And this is gonna take a lot of steps, but really the first one is just gonna select this whole area here and selecting it all the way to the difference there. Once we do that, we're gonna head over to insert and we're gonna go over to the insert column and we'll select this one over here, the stacked bar. Great, let me move this to the side here. And the first part is just deleting that title we also want to get rid of those grid lines and now we're ready to get started and if you notice here we have the january and february and we have the difference so we don't actually need the april and may because this plus this here is going to equal to april and may so we can just go to click on the bar there right click select data and we're just going to remove the april and may amounts here so untick that and hit on OK. That's step one. We also want to reverse the category order here. So we're just going to select on this area, right click and go to format axis. So we want this to be categories in reverse order like so. We can close out of that for now. And we also want to change these um, grids over here. So this axis, right click, format axis, we want to format it the same way as the visual, so from 6.5 as the minimum, 6.5 all the way to 8 as the maximum here, and we want these increments to be in 0.5, so we'll hit enter there. You can see what that looks like. We can also get rid of these ones over here, because we really only need the difference in there, which is the part that's portrayed here. So we're going to go over to right click, and under fill here, we're just gonna go for no fill. Nice, you can see what that looks like. And now we're missing these dots to the sides. So for them, what we wanna do is just click on any of these and right click, select data. So we basically need to add more data points. These are going to be for a scatter plot that we'll add on top of this bar. That's what's gonna allow us to add the dots. So we're gonna go over to add there and we wanna add two series names. One is the January to February, so I'm just gonna call it J to F. And the series values, we're gonna select all of these ranks over here. So just control shift down and hit enter there, hit on okay. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. So it's gonna be A to M, so April to May. And we're gonna select the exact same ranks and hit on okay there and hit on okay again. So now that we have that data, I know it's looking quite messy, but just bear with me because we're gonna need to change these. So right click, go to change series chart type. And these two last ones, we wanna make these scatters, right? They're only going to be dots. So we want this scatter and we want that second one to be a scatter as well. So JF and AM and we'll hit on okay there. You can see right now it's not looking great, 
but that's because we haven't selected the right areas yet. So we can go to right click, select data, and for JF here, let's go ahead and edit it. And now because it's a scatter, you can see that we have the series X values. That's where we wanna add the January to February area. So just control shift down there and hit on okay. And same thing goes for this AM part. So edit series X values. And this is going to be the April to May area. So control shift down there, hit on okay there and hit on okay again. So now you can see that we're starting to see a lot of these dots, but we need to change the axis here. So it actually goes from zero to 10, not all the way to 12, which is why they're misaligned. So we can go to right click, format axis. And so that minimum is fine at zero, but the max should be at 10 and we'll hit enter there. We don't need that grid line anymore. So we'll just delete it. And now we're ready to work on these. So firstly, we wanna select the bar. You'll notice that they're all slightly below the dots, which is not quite great there. So we can right click on that bar and go to format data series. We wanna reduce that gap width all the way to 500 there, so to the maximum. And for these dots, we just wanna select on this whole area here, right click, format axis, and it's gonna be on tick marks as the axis position instead of between. Now you can see they're well aligned. We wanna change the bar color to a gray, so right click, under fill, let's say we go for this gray over here, and if you think they're just too thick, for example, we can just select them as well. So let's select all of these. What we wanna do is actually compress them with the border. So we're gonna compress them with a white border so they look smaller. So it would be right click, form a data series there, and under the fill, we're just gonna, under border here down below, select a solid line. So down over here for the width, if you keep increasing it, it's gonna squeeze the gray area out. We want that to be in white though, not in red. So now you can see they're a good bit smaller. And for these dots, we can actually make them bigger. So we can select the blue one first, go over to this fill and line. And these are markers essentially, so that's what we'll edit. We want the marker options to be built in. Let's say we go for something like a size seven. And this side over here, we're gonna make them bigger as well built in to a size seven. And let's also change the color there to something like a red. Now you can see what that's looking like. So they look fairly similar. One more thing we could add is some kind of grid lines. So we could go over to chart design and all the way to the side here, add chart elements. We'll go for a grid line and it's gonna be say the second one. Now that's looking a lot more like it. For these red dots, you might notice they seem to have some kind of a border. So we can go over to marker there and go for no line for border. And let's make these maybe this darker red over here. For, so this dark red. Now that's looking really good. So let me just fast forward how I do the rest. You can see for these two circles that we've got, you can actually go under shapes and just select this uh, oval shape here but we don't want it to be oval. So you can just hit on the shift key. That's gonna keep it a perfect circle. So just by hitting on that shift key there. Now let me fast forward that. Awesome, that's the final visual done. And this one's actually telling us how working from home has extended the number of working hours across these different countries. Now to go from just making individual charts to making full on dashboards that are dynamic, check out this video over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.